Hello there and welcome. I'm Ole Brugger and if you're new here, I really hope I'll earn your subscription today. I just broke the LCD in my 3D printer and it was very unfortunate. But I hope I can change it. I've never done it on this model before. I did it on my Saturn S, but this look a bit more complicated. But uh, let's see how it goes. I ordered a new LCD and we're going to replace it. Shido Systems, they sent me this Hoopad X4. It's a new resin tank where it is a lot easier to replace the PFA film. So we are going to test that out in the end of this video after we replace the screen. We better get started. First, I will need to remove the tank, and I already loosened the screws. The reason why my screen cracked was because part of the print fell off, and I didn't notice when I started the second print. And when the build plate hit the debris, it put pressure on the LCD, and it cracked. Lucky enough, I didn't have a leak. I followed the guide that Elegoo actually made, and it's really good and very informative. I will leave a link to the official Elegu guide in the description. But I think it is still a very complicated printer to disassemble. At least the most complicated printer I have ever disassembled. And removing screws is pretty easy. Everybody can do that. But when it got to removing the cables, the first thing, tape, was easy. But on my printer, everything was filled with hot glue. All the plugs were set up with hot glue and it was very hard for me to get them off. But there's a lot of more screws that needs to be removed and this is for the top and a single screw on the back. And now we can remove the top. We are not done yet. There's still a lot of screws to remove. And now the side panels can come off. Just need to remove the cable for the front display. And then there's a lot more screws in the bottom of the printer. I didn't count the total number of screws on this printer, but I think there was a lot. Now I just need to remove the rest of the cables and there is still a lot of hot glue I need to remove first. I think I spent more time removing hot glue than removing screws. Now the protective tape around the LCD will have to be removed. Carefully, I had to remove all the screws from the Fresnel lens. I was considering using a heat gun or a hairdryer to loosen up the adhesive, but it was actually pretty easy putting a gentle pressure on the back of the LCD and then it popped out. And I wasn't very concerned that it should break because it was broken anyway. However, it took a lot of effort to remove the old adhesive. I had to use some plastic scraping tools, isopropyl alcohol, and a lot of effort. But now to the fun part, installing the new display. I think the packaging is very nice, it's very protective, and it is very easy to get things out of the box. Here is the LCD, and we have the data cable. It's very important to connect the cable the right way, and I compared it to the old panel. And the new panel also came with some double-sided adhesive. I can highly recommend not using latex gloves when you're installing the tape. It will just stick to it and it's very annoying. But now I can remove the protective film from the bottom of the panel and then I can start installing it. I left the top part on because I thought, well, it's better to have some protection. To make sure it would stay put, I gave it a light but firm pressure and then I could remove the top film and install the protective tape on top of the display. And this was also included in the box with the new panel. And now we can start to assemble everything again. First the Fresnel lens and back to installing a ton of screws on the bottom panel, side panels, top and everything else. Plugging in all the cables and I will not reapply hot glue on this because if I'm going to service this printer again in the future, it will be a lot easier and faster to detach all the cables. Before I put the last things together, 
I wanted it to test out the printer and see. Well, it starts to boot, so that's a good sign. Let's see if the new LCD panel will work as well. Yes, it does. Thumbs up for that. Let's put the last things together and then we can have a look at the new tank from G2 Systems. And since the PFA film was damaged on my old resin tank, I would need to change that as well. It was so lucky that G2 System reached out to me and asked me to test out their new tank system. And then I don't have to remove all these bloody screws. Full disclaimer, G2 Systems did not pay me to make this video, they just sent me this product for free to test out. Okay, let's see what's in the box. This is from G2 System, Poopad X4, and it is a new type resin tank for printers. This system is compatible with all the printers that you can see on the screen now. And here we have the tank. It's actually nice that it comes with a lid. I really missed that for my old tank. And then we got some instructions. The tank itself is made out of aluminium, or aluminium if you are on the other side of the pond. It is very rigid and it feels like it is very good quality. There is four levers, one on each side, where you can loosen and tighten the clamps that holds the inner frame. The set also came with three pieces of PFA film. And it's very easy to remove the protective film on one side and then you can install it on the small taps that matches up with the holes. And finally remove the protective film on the other side. And now we can put it back into the tank and tighten the clamps. I must say that was pretty easy. Now it's ready to go. Shido Systems also sent me a couple of bottles of resin and we are going to try them out as well. I think I will go with the grey. The printer is now back in my workshop and I will pour up some resin and start a print. And after a couple of hours, I had a flawless print. Must say, I think this works pretty good. It has been a few days since I have replaced the LCD on my 3D printer. And it has worked perfectly. However, I have printed a lot and unfortunately I had a failed print. Not anything about the LCD or the new tank system. But when I was cleaning out the tank using the tank clean function in the printer, I accidentally poked a hole in the PFA film. But after cleaning the tank, it took me less than a minute to replace the film on this tank. And I've never done that quick. If I have to do that on the old tank, it would have taken me at least half an hour to 45 minutes to unloosen all those screws and get it back right. This is it for now, and thank you to C2 Systems for sending me this new tank. I think it is awesome. There will be links in the description below where you can get a 5% discount. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, if you already haven't done it, Push this button up here to subscribe, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment below if you have something to say about this tank. Goodbye for now.